Hello Watch Fam, hope you're all really well. Uh, it's been a as I, as I have been saying so so often recently, it's been a while since I've posted. So um, I've got a bit of time this weekend, just uh, going through the uh, typical weekend blues, day before uh, going back to work. I thought I'd, um, I'd get a video out. I was thinking for a bit what I should get the video out on, a, on uh, or about, but uh, there have been so many topics circulating in my mind. So I think I'll go for some of the most recent stuff that's been happening for me in a watch world. Um, Oh, by the way, uh, wristwatch check, um, SRP777, Seiko Turtle, uh, the J version, if that makes a difference. Uh, just got this uh, a few days ago, really enjoying it. Um, which leads me on nicely to, to what's actually been, um, been happening in the, uh, in the watch world. So, I actually did quite a, uh, quite a bit of exploring uh, the last few weeks. I've been, uh, I've been out and around. Different parts of the Middle East, um, popped over to Europe, um, but I think the, one of the most interesting places I went to was Petra in Jordan, uh, which was a lot of walking, probably 20 kilometers a day, uh, climbing um, you know, various inclines on man-made steps, which are far from perfect. Um, you know, you watch donkeys doing it. They actually have donkeys there climbing these steps, these these famous steps to see the uh, the monastery. Um, you know, walks to see the treasury and and whatnot. I mean, loads of things. Anyway, I was walking around. You know, a few times I did have a little bit of a slip, especially when you're stepping onto a sandy stone. Uh, be it climbing up or, or, or going down. It seems descents are always uh, just as tricky as ascents, um, e even more so. Anyway, so I knew that I was going on a bit of an expedition a few days there, um, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to probably wear my, um, my SKX. So I took the SKX, and uh, I was really happy with it. It was comfortable. On the fly, I could have really done with having a, an adjustable bracelet. I could have probably stopped somewhere and, and used, a, used a toothpick to maybe give myself an extra slot there of space. I, I had swollen up when I was uh, walking in the 35 degree heat uh, all day long. I mean, uh, this bracelet was, was on its limit. Um, but it kind of just made me think, you know, there are a few times where I did, I think, graze this watch, um, you know, against the slope. You know, if I was competing to uh, climb the same stairs as a donkey, which did happen. You know, there's a, someone riding a donkey up the stairs that you're climbing. But it's held up pretty well. To be honest, I haven't really inspected it. Um, it's not a watch where, you know, you're worried. Like, for example, if it was a Rolex, you know, the general, generally most of us will, will feel when we knock a Rolex and we'll, we'll sit there like this, like, oh, shit, what happened, you know. But I didn't really care about this one, you know. It's, what is it? It's a $200 watch or $250 watch, whatever it is. And I just, it was just nice to have this, fling it around, like, didn't really care. And it's, it's after I got back from Petra in Jordan, I thought to myself... You know, if I was to do that all over again, if I was to go somewhere else now, some other expedition or some other sort of, um, you know, area where I need a watch, that would be a tool watch and that one, I, one a watch that I wouldn't be so bothered about should something happen. What would I do? Would I go for, for an Explorer 2? Would I go for, you know, something that's been marketed for me to be an Explorer? Or would I go for something which I really enjoy about? Something happens, something happens. And I thought to myself, it will probably be a Seiko again. Um, you know, I'm going to try to stay away from, from Rolex watches in this particular video. Some of you will probably uh, automatically turn off in that case. I don't blame you. That's probably what I would have been like about a year or two ago. I just wanted to uh, increase my, um, my coverage of Rolex as much as possible, certain different models and whatnot. But, but what happened? So... I think I've, I've entered a bit of a, uh, a rabbit hole in the Seiko world. I was looking at it from a hor horological standpoint. And I just find for true watch buffs, you know, put the investment 
thing to one side now. You know, buying your Rolex and you're happy because you know that you bought a Rolex at the authorized dealer and it's worth more now than you bought it for. Put that to one side. Fact is, we're just buying Rolex watches which are being reissued or new versions of older versions like the Pepsi for example and whatever. And they are fantastic watches. I love Rolex. I'm not saying anything bad about it. Um, but when you look in the Seiko world, you just take a moment to just maybe find the, the true watch buff in, inside you. You just do find that they have such an appealing uh, variety of watches. I remember myself as a kid, uh, maybe when I was six, seven, eight years old, I used to flick through the kind of an Argos catalogue. So I don't know for my American audience or international audience, what is an Argos catalogue? I don't know. It's like a department store catalogue where you can buy watches, you can buy things for your pets, you can buy wardrobes, you can buy, it's like a mash of electronics, Ikea, everything together. You just sit there and you just look through the Argus catalogue. I used to always browse the Argus catalogue when I was a kid and I used to always, I think, look at Seiko watches and Seconda watches and I, I just always liked watches. Different watches, you know, chronographs, no chronographs, etc, etc. Anyway, so the reason I kind of started to, to like Seiko was probably, I, I knew that they were a hardy brand and I know that they are an older brand. They actually are older than Rolex. I think they're from like the mid 1800s, mid 1850s, 1860s, about the same time fax was invented. So very old watch. And when I got the SKX maybe now a year or two ago, I've enjoyed something about it because I haven't had to care about it. And the 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 investment side of Rolex has for me, anyway, somewhat dented my, my, my enjoyment of the watch because, as I've mentioned in some of my previous videos, it's forced me to use my investment brain, which I don't, I've never really wanted to do that with watches. So I kind of, I've been on this kind of Easter egg hunt for watches that aren't really Rolex. I mean, it, it doesn't help the fact that I can't actually buy any more Rolexes in the Middle East. The local dealer here, Ahmed Siddiqui, has pretty much blacklisted me because I've picked up all these sports models and they won't actually sell me anything else. Even ones that I don't have, for example, the, the Pepsi or the Batman, they just won't sell it to me. We, we are ha we're having an ongoing battle with that. So you have a watch itch, right? I mean, I can't buy it here. I'm not traveling to different places to Europe a lot now to, because, and I know I won't be able to buy a Rolex there. So. You got the watch itch, you think, well, what other watches are there? And um, I don't want to go into the sort of field of just buying any old watches now and, and, and ruining my collection, but I did feel that my collection needed something a bit more pure and hardy and cheaper. Um, not necessarily meaning worse, just cheaper, just different, you know? You know, let's 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 compare a um, a 911 Porsche, which is the standard comparison for a Submariner. Let's compare that to, for example, a um, an old school Honda Civic Type R. You know, fantastic Japanese engineering, naturally aspirated. This is for the engine buffs. Reliable, high revving, does does the job day in day out. Doesn't let you down. Fantastic gearbox. Everything is synchronized. That's kind of Seiko. Um, you know, a few people around me, they're, they're confused, like, Mike, 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 what are you doing, like, Seiko? And, and then I say, I say a few things, and they're like, oh, I didn't know that. I've got a uh, small group of friends now who actually all have um, SKXs, 009s and 007s. Since they, they saw this one, they've actually gone and, and purchased. They've gone on and purchased these watches. So I've got a mate right now in uh, Washington, D.C., He's got nice watches, but uh, he's wearing the SKX uh, 007J on uh, on a NATO. You know, the fact is that you know, there is watch crime, there is theft, so you have to be a bit careful. But it looks wicked. It looks really nice on him. So, um, so the last week since I got back from my uh, my excursion, I've been ringing around and going to different shops, just looking at Seikos. Uh, and, and admittedly, I've been kind of learning about the brand a little bit. I don't want to just go out and purchase loads of... You know, some of the Seikos I flat out don't like. I don't like the green fake Hulk one. I don't like the 
the Batman wannabes. I don't like all that rubbish, all the chronograph stuff. I, I, I admire the technology they have in a lot of their watches. For instance, the solar charging watches. I think X amount of time in the sun gives you 10 months of, of charge. That is amazing. Amazing. We have all become so, I don't know, Hans Wilsdorf, you know, the, the founder of Rolex. We've all been so Hans Wilsdorf and Rolex that I guess the people I'll be reaching out to maybe are actually a smaller segment than, than, than we all would care to imagine. But as I said in my previous video, <clears throat> You know, where we're not competing with just watch buffs or, or watch enthusiasts, we're competing with investors in terms of getting the right Rolexes or the Rolexes we want now. You know, people who never cared about watches now feel comfortable to buy watches because they know that they won't lose out value wise. It's like, oh, I've never been into watches, but I can buy a, you're telling me I can buy a Rolex Batman or a Sub and I can sell it for an extra 20% or, or 30, 40%. And it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, okay, I might as well pick one up. That's your buyer doesn't come from any horological kind of um, background. It's just like, oh, money, 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 dollar signs, dollar signs, dollar signs. I can wear it, it looks nice, dollar signs. The Sub and, and Rolexes, they, they were never really about that, maybe to an extent, but nowhere, nowhere near to what it is nowadays. So without me trying to obviously sound like I'm justifying my Seiko purchases, I guess I'm just trying to maybe justify my Seiko purchases. Um, I wanted something a little bit purer, and something that tickles my interest at heart a little bit more. You know, I've I've done the whole Rolex game. I've got the ones I want. Um, I would obviously like to add a, a GMT Master II, um, but that won't be happening for me in 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 this country. So I'll I'll reserve that for another time. So for instance, I picked this up, which funnily enough, this was the last SRP triple seven in the UAE. This one. That's it. It's finished. There, there aren't, there aren't, they aren't getting any more in the UAE. I got it on a black rubber strap, and, and whilst I was in the shop, I, um, I said, "Look, have you got any straps?" Because I couldn't be bothered to do the whole Instagram ordering nonsense. So I looked at some, and they had this one. I just picked it up as well, and I've really enjoyed it. It's, it's not supremely expensive. It's, it, it's very smooth to turn. It keeps time really well. I haven't timed it, but a lot of people online report that it's within five seconds a day um, everything is is intact it's 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 nicely set out the size is nice the, the case is nice really enjoying it and I was surprised to to see how difficult it is to get the SRP triple seven um, apparently this watch is now being replaced by a different watch from Seiko which will look exactly like this watch but it's going to be renamed and it's going to be around double the price that this one was um, so I thought, you know what, it's not like I'm buying this watch to make money. I'll, I doubt I'll ever sell this watch. Maybe one day I'll give it to my dad. He's not really a watch guy, but he likes a nice, reliable watch. So who knows? I'll, I'll see how I feel. So that was all after my Jordanian Petra visit. I had been back in Dubai a week. I, I loved how this guy held up. I thought, you know what, I'd like to add another Seiko just in case. And after I added this Seiko, I, um, I started looking around what other kind of rarer Seikos without going vintage and all this. I mean, this one is based on, I think, a Seiko 6309 or something like that. Uh, it's a re-release, 42 mil. This is a 41 mil. No, this is 44 mil, actually. It's a re-release, and apparently it's true to the original, which I wish Rolex did, for example. Like, why do you, did you not give us a, a new GMT Pepsi with actual red and blue, like like the original had red and blue. I don't want purple and purple, you know? It's like one's pink and purple. It's a bit strange, just give us ones that look the same or similar, make it fresher, newer, but not like overhauled. But then again, I know that, I think we all know that Rolex are doing the whole shift thing, aren't they? They're moving into different territory and then Tudor step into the Rolex of old territory. Um, speaking of Tudor, some hard marketing now during the Rugby World Cup. Every time I, I look somewhere, you know, when I'm watching the rugby, it's like Tudor, Tudor, Tudor. The All Blacks, Tudor. It's, uh, I mean, there are some nice All Black Tudor watches now, but I'm not really buying into it. Anyway, so back to um, my kind of watch fiasco. So I picked up the Turtle 777. 
you know, there's a there's there's another one which is Save the Ocean, which is blue and all that. But I just didn't want any of that. I didn't want to get into it. I I don't really want to have a collection of Seikos. I'm, you know, I just only ever planned on having one Seiko. Um, and then I realised that there are actually quite a few cool ones. But anyway, I did this one, and I th I looked around, and apparently in the US and Europe, it's difficult to get an Arabic dial Seiko. And it got me interested because I started reading up about the Seiko 5, the Arabic dial one. And I, uh, I, I rang a few stores in the Middle East and I said, have you got this particular watch? They said, for the size I'm looking for, which is 42 mil, they said they've only got two in the, in the whole of the UAE, which is, um, it's got like Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Sharjah, all that involved in, in the one country. I said, where are they? They said, um, they're in well near where I live, so I uh, I uh, I was down there pretty quickly. Not expensive at all. Same movement as the SKX, and I picked up a um, an Arabic dial. I have no idea what this is even called actually, but um, SNP something twenty one J or something like that. Pick this bad boy up, and I hated it on the bracelet. And it's not a watch to which I envisage wearing often, but even the sort of exposed case back, uh, which which is there, I just can't be bothered to re remove the NATO. It's a very interesting watch. I don't read Arabic, um, and I, I don't think I ever will read Arabic, but for me, the Arabic dial just looked interesting because it just has something different about it. And it was... I think it cost me maybe about £90 or £100. Let's just say it cost me uh, about $150 or less. I thought, you know what, whilst I'm in this Seiko rabbit hole, which I'm desperately trying to like dig myself out of now because I've fallen into it, I might as well pick one more watch up and then call it a day. And I think I can safely now say that I have called it a day in the Seiko world. I think having three Seikos um, is enough for me on top of what I have. But what I like about this watch, or this watch, mostly, isn't the way that they look quite funky. It's the fact that they have an automatic movement in a watch which is, you know, $130 and $200. A solid, robust, automatic movement. Um, you know, something the Japanese set out to do many, many years ago to provide one to the consumers, an affordable automatic movement. And... You know, we might grill them saying, well, it's not as, it's not as um, reliable as your Swiss. But since when did it all just become about Swiss watches? Um, and this is why I, I don't know much about my viewers. I can only base or judge my viewers based on the fact that I have only pretty much posted about Rolexes. Some stuff about Tudor, some stuff about Panerai or Panerai video I had. I actually deleted that video. Um, I can only judge you guys. On that and you know in a comment section I probably will get quite a few comments saying why are you going down this route or no you're like you know you're Rolex all the way and I always will like Rolex um, to be honest my sea dweller uh, I think it's somewhere upstairs I haven't I haven't uh, actually I did wear it yesterday for a short while because yesterday was one of those days where I think I wore about three or four different watches because I was just comparing them all but before that I hadn't worn it for a while um, I think from next week I might get this SD50 back on. But for now, I'm enjoying the uh, this 45mm SRP777 Turtle. I'm actually astounded, astounded by, by the build quality of the, um, of the case. I watched a few videos about this watch because I didn't know much about it. I didn't really know what I was... I couldn't even try one on in the shops because they don't have them in the shops here at the moment because I think the, these are now being discontinued, phased out. So I, I just watched some reviews and I thought, ah, I don't want to be seeing white gloves in reviews. I, I want someone to be kind of like going for it, like, you know, give me a bit of, I don't know, some feedback. How did you get onto this journey? Where is, it, where is this all coming from? I wanted to get that vibe, but I couldn't. You know, it's just, there are good vi good videos out there, of course, and people who have way more knowledge than me when it comes to Seiko's or any other watch for, for, for that matter. But I wasn't getting what I wanted from, from, from the reviews. Um, so I thought, 
I'm going to just have to get one from wherever they got this watch in the UAE and just go to wherever they've got it. And I, and I went there. Um, they had it on reserve for two days. I was still wasn't sure, should I buy it, should I not? They were like calling and said, look, we're going to have to release it and all this. So I went there in the evening. I thought, you know what? I've heard about the quality control issues on these. It's something, there's going to be something wrong with this watch. And I'll be able to just tell them that I don't want it because actually there's a, there's a QC issue here. It wasn't, it was perfect. Everything's aligned. The, um, the data lines, the data lines, the whole dial line, everything's perfect in this particular watch. Put it on and I was like, you know what? I probably would have preferred to have this watch with me in my, uh, in my recent travels than, than maybe the SKX. Um, not to say I don't like the SKX, but you know, it does feel two times the watch that the SKX feels. But it's not two times the price. It does feel two times the price of the SKX. So I, well, I kind of just wanted to add to my, um, my, my YouTube content, obviously a watch content I wanted to add, but I didn't want to add another Rolex um, story. I've got a few things I want to raise with, with you guys about Rolex and um, a few long-term reviews I want to do, a few catch-ups. Um, on the sort of pricing of Rolex is where it's all going. Some catch up in terms of my issue here with Rolex in the Middle East. But I think the most recent thing in my mind has been the, the Seiko conundrum. And when you look at some of the stuff Seiko have made over the last sort of 20, 30 years, it's so easy to discount most of it. And I do discount most of it. But there are some real jewels, I believe, in the Seiko's Seiko World Collection, some real jewels. And I might not have all of them right now, and I don't think I ever will. I don't really want to have more than three Seikos. I think when I do leave, leave the Middle East one day, for me, this Arab, Arab, um, Arabic dial, it will always, it will always remind me of the fact that I spent a decade in the Middle East. Um, and that's what it means to me because a friend said, why do you need an Arabic dial? You don't even read Arabic. And he's very, he's, he's, he's true. He's right. But for me, it'll always be a watch, which in the future I'll probably have with me in wherever I'll live, Europe, Far East, US, wherever I'll live. And I'll pick it up from time to time. Maybe wear it for a few days here and there. I'll go, oh, I spent a lot of time in the Middle East where obviously Arabic is, is, the, is, the, is the main language. So, so yeah, that's what I kind of wanted to cover guys. It wasn't going to be anything extensive. It was, it was more my foray into the uh, the Seiko world, and it's kind of for me Seiko is like, it's like a Honda or a Toyota. I, I obviously referred to my uh, I obviously referred to my old Civic Type R in in a video, which makes me feel it's more Honda, but but it's like a Honda Toyota, and you know what? It's just as good as the other watches in terms of getting you where you need to get. Quality might not be there, but there is something pleasing about the whole thing um, about what what the Japanese were able to do what they were able to accomplish um, you know in, in the years when the Swiss were just going like this with, in the watch world uh, and they wanted to create automatic stuff for the everyday man you know the everyday person who isn't going to be spending thousands and thousands of dollars as he's mentioning that when I was looking at these watches which are you know 100 200 dollars they had the grand the grand Seiko stand. I was super disappointed with it. Um, I know there's a lot of stuff going on, on the internet around Grand Seiko now, but I don't buy into Grand Seiko at all. Like the whole four, five, six thousand dollar watches they have. Um, maybe I I like automatic movements. I do not have a quartz watch, and I don't think that I ever will have a quartz watch. It's, it doesn't appeal to me. At least these ones are all alive they're all alive when i choose to pick them take them out of my drawer my cupboard wherever i have these seikos and they start to beat when whenever i want to use them so i kind of like that but the fact that i was looking at these watches one meter away from the grand seiko part it was it was watering down the grand seiko-ness of the grand seiko it was like well hold on a minute you want me to spend five or six thousand dollars more even eight thousand dollars on those watches and they're next to these kind of watches. These are all everyday man watches, which are not expensive. And um, 
I think they the Seiko need to sort that that aspect out. Um, I think I remember Rolex used to have Tudor in the same store for the Middle East anyway, but they don't anymore. Tudor are in different separate stores now to Rolex. Rolex is Rolex and Tudor is somewhere else with like um, Panerai, Tag, all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, guys, I, I hope I haven't missed anything. Um, I'll hopefully post a video um, before the end of the month. I'll be traveling anyway, so I prefer to post when I'm sort of on the fly. Uh, it always gives me sort of some good thinking time about you know the sort of next content that I want to, uh, to bring to the table. So uh, thanks very much for listening, and, uh, and stay good. Bye.